Hi, welcome to this month's deep dive. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And for this deep dive, we're going to take a look at the serials module. This is going to be fantastic, Jesse. A lot of libraries are kind of fearful of this or are not ready to jump in. And maybe this is going to give them the opportunity to also deep dive into the serials module. And I will say, over the last few years, the serials module has really enhanced the user experience. For example, we've got the addition of the MANA database. So now you can search other libraries for prediction patterns. And a lot of times that's kind of the number one halt of people is trying to figure out the prediction pattern. And now you can search. And of course, we'll show you all of that. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, well, Jesse, it looks like you're on the serials module, but generally I prefer to, to start with finding the record that we're going to attach a um, subscription to. So I've got my Martha Stewart Living magazine that we're going to use as our example. Okay, but 2020 are we going to do? Yep. Yeah. All right. So we already have that bib record. And now if we go to that new, we can say new subscription. And I agree with Kelly. This, this way of doing the connection of the serial subscription to the bib record is much faster than coming directly into the serials module and clicking on new, because then you know you're getting the right serial, especially if you have years and years of individual bib records of a particular title. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so let's start with the subscription details. So if you have vendors in your acquisitions module, even if you're not using acquisitions, you can still enter a vendor into your acquisitions module and select an individual to track claims for late serial. So Kelly, should we quickly jump over to vendors just to look at that? Yeah. So in acquisitions, again, even if you don't use the acquisitions module, you can still create a new vendor, or if you are using acquisitions and you do have a vendor set up, in the vendor's record, I'm gonna come in here to, to edit this vendor so we can take a look at this. Under contacts, you have, one is primary serials contact, contact when ordering, contact about late orders and contact about late issues. So if you want to submit a claim within the serials module, you can select this checkbox, enter in your individual's name and their email address and Koha will actually send them an email. Mm -hmm. There's even a system preference that you can link to BCC yourself so you get a copy of that claim. Yep. So it's really, really nice. Perfect. Okay, so let's go back to serials and we'll come in here and just search for a vendor and, and add that one in. Yeah, perfect. Whatever this, I've never heard of this vendor. This must be specific to your world, Jesse. <laughs> it's about actually 45 minutes down the road. Oh, is it? Perfect. Yeah. Great. The next section, we can see it's already linked to the Martha Stewart record, which is where we started. The next, you could go back as Jesse's hovering over. If we started here, we could go ahead and search for the record. The subscription details is you will decide whether you're going to create an item record, which means are you barcoding each issue that you receive or are you not creating items for this subscription? So you have create an item or don't create an item. The next section you'll see is when there's an irregular issue. Let's use People Magazine as an example. You know, sometimes they'll send out the big wedding issue or, you know, <laughs> whatever the big blockbuster hit is. There's a new Avengers movie. I have no idea. So this allows you to either skip the issue number or keep the issue number, meaning in your prediction pattern, it will modify and add that number to the next one for that special issue, or you can choose to um, skip it. Again, that's, that's a preference, how you want your numbering pattern to populate. Manual history, Jesse, you wanna talk a little bit about manual history? Yeah, if you check this box, 
this gives you the opportunity to edit the subscription from the planning tab within the subscription itself. And we'll show you that after we complete this new subscription. I generally suggest checking this box. Mm -hmm. So often publishers decide to change the frequency of a magazine or a periodical where, you know, maybe you get a monthly subscription to something and they decide to go to 10. So, right, they're combining January and February and July and August, let's say. That gives you the opportunity to edit it right from the um, planning tab within the subscription. Just an easier way to do it. It's just great flexibility. Yep. Call number. So this is your call number that um, if you are creating items, they would default to for each one of these. If not, this is just a call number for your subscription details. Um, what library this serial belongs to. Public note and non-public note. I love that Koha gives us all the opportunities to write notes about things. This could be this magazine was donated or like a non-public node of our subscription history with this, whatever. You have the opportunity to definitely put information about this serial subscription itself. The next thing you'll see here is patron notification. This is a way to allow your patrons to sign up on the OPAC and track a serial or a magazine that they like. So I use Runner's World, for example. I can, on the OPAC, subscribe to that serial and it will send a notification to me via email when that issue is checked in. Mm -hmm. Some people turn this on, some people don't turn it on. It's a system preference that really says allow um, your patrons to receive notifications. So that's definitely up to you if you wanna allow that, that type of functionality. Absolutely. Location, where does this live in your library? So this is your shelving location. Then we have perfect reading room. We have two item type, and this again is a system preference. So this is allowing us to assign an item type for this magazine and an item type for older issues. So you could, if you circulate your magazines, but you don't circulate the most current one, you could say, when I receive a new one, set it to that non-circulating item type. But when I receive the next one, make the non-circulating one circulating and the newest one non-circulating. Once you have set that system preference, previous serial make available, I think it's called, it would, it gives you both of those options here. The next thing you'll see is grace period. We highly suggest filling this out. What this allows you to do is, let's say I put 30 days in here. If I have not received this particular periodical within 30 days of its predicted receiving date, it will automatically mark it late for you. There's an easy way for you to look at those late periodicals. Um, so then it's easier when you're doing that claim process within the system. So even if you set it high, because you know sometimes it comes, you know, 10 days late or 20 days late, this is just a great way to track it so you don't have to worry about looking at it, each individual subscription in the system. Absolutely. This is another system preference. So you do have a default number of issues to display to the staff and to public, and that's pretty much what they're called in system preferences. However, if you wanna go outside of what the, that system preference default is set at, then you can import those numbers and put those numbers there. Perfect. All right, now that we finished our form on the first page, now we're gonna go into subscription planning. So this will now, allow us to start looking either through other libraries prediction patterns or setting one up ourselves. So Kelly, let's first talk about MANA knowledge base. Yeah, absolutely. This started a few versions ago and it's a knowledge base that you can find subscription pattern information also reports. So this is a great way to search other library systems to see if they already have this serial and help you set up your serials planning section. So you'll see here, I just hit show and it populates a list 
I can see that ISSN number, the title, and then what I usually look at is the number of users to see how many other users are actually using this prediction pattern. So you have two buttons here over on the actions column. The first one is import. So it'll import a copy of the prediction pattern into your system. Now, you'll also notice this report. If you notice that it's wrong or there's a mistake or it's changed, you can submit a comment back to uh, the community about this particular prediction pattern. And this is a great tool to, to help the community grow in its MANA knowledge base, as well as keeping it relevant to making sure it's got good information. Okay, so let's grab a copy of this one and take a look. So I'm gonna hit this. So under the actions column, we're gonna select that import and that will then bring in a copy of the MANA subscription. So here you can see one month, and then after that, there's a hover for MANA. It defaults to the numbering pattern, which is just a number in the case of this Martha Stewart living. So Kelly, let's first talk about the first issue publication date. Let's talk about why this is so crucial. This is, this is crucial to tell Koha when to start your planning. So we're going to start with the first issue that we have in hand. This is not when did Martha Stewart start writing a magazine, probably back in, what do you think, the 80s, early 90s, who knows. Um, this is the actual first issue we're going to start our subscription in Koha with. So we have the November issue. So we can go ahead and set that for a, I don't know if this is a mid-month arrival or not. So whatever you want to pick for a date. We'll use today. Oh, oh today started the 13th. Yeah, I know. I know. So again, just driving this home, because this is really crucial. If you know that something comes towards the first of the month, you want to make sure you choose the first of the month because then Koha will always predict it. If you know it's a weekly title and it comes every Friday, then choose a Friday on the current calendar when you select that date because Koha will use that to predict everything else. So this one is very crucial to setting up when you're going to begin that receiving process. It also takes in place with your grace period as well. So mm -hmm. if you say it comes on the first, but really Martha doesn't come until like the 20th, that's already giving 20 days into that grace period to alert your vendor. So this is really, I'll make it late. I apologize. Oh, that's, that's good. Okay. Subscription length. You have three options here, issues, weeks, or months. And, and this truly comes down to how you want to set this up. We know Martha Stewart is 12 issues a year, or we can say we have a subscription for 12 months. This again is, this is your call. Um, for us, I'm going to do 12 issues for this one. Next, we have subscription start date. So this is when your library has started the subscription for the periodical. So I'm going to go with November 1 since we're starting our first issue as um, November 13th. Now, subscription end date. You can populate this field. If you leave it blank, it will use the subscription length that you entered above to estimate when the end of your subscription is. If you know what it is, you can absolutely come in here and enter that information in as well. I also like to, to note that subscription length, although it may not be useful for libraries to use, when setting up your planning, the number of issues in this case of 12, we will actually see the next 12 predicted for us. And that will be really helpful to see how is it going to plan the next year? So if you only put three, you're not really going to see the entire prediction pattern that Koha is capable of. You may want to extend that out a bit. Excellent. Next, you'll see numbering pattern. So this is essentially telling Koha, how are we receiving it? Volume three, issue one. Volume three, number two, issue six. You know, whatever it is, you can set that up. Now, Koha comes pre-populated with about four. You can create as many as you want. You can create unique ones, or you can bring them in from the show Mana results. Yep. 
This is locale, which is if you want to, if it's in English, you're going to leave this blank. So that should be easy enough. Then the next box is actually the most important to say, what is the issue in hand starting with? So what does your actual magazine, the November one that we're setting this up as start with? And my number is um, 309. Okay, perfect. The next thing we have here is the inter counter, inter counter. This also is crucial to setting up your prediction pattern. Now, if we were starting with something very simple, like volume eight, issue one, that would predict issue two, issue three, issue four, issue five. In this case, we're starting with a odd number, as in 309. The inner counter is what predicts how many issues or numbers or volumes came before 309. So Kelly, what would our inner counter here be? 308. It's always one right before whatever your issue is. So if this was 15, Kelly, what would our inner counter be? 14. What if it was 262? 261. Okay, there's our math lesson for the day. <laughs> All right, talk about show advanced pattern. Yeah, absolutely. So Koha has taken the information at the top and it's kind of said, okay, given that you told me that this is a monthly magazine and the numbering pattern is set up as a number and you're starting with 309, column X is where all our good stuff is going to live. It is locked. So you can see you cannot edit any of these values. If you did need to add or edit these, you can certainly modify the pattern. And that is in essence going to create a new pattern. You're gonna rename it and then it's going to be new to you. This, if we start from the top under label, number is number, begins with 309. Then it tells, Co Koha is telling it, okay, add how many every time I receive an issue. So this is saying add one to the number 309 every time, every one gets received. And then bring that number back to one when you get to, what is that number? 999,000. So that's a pretty basic, we're telling Koha, just keep on counting. Martha doesn't stop. There are um, volume number combinations where they only, the numbers go up to 12 and then they reset back to one and then the volume goes up by one. And that would be a different um, advanced prediction pattern. But for this um, case, we are just adding one every time we receive one. Excellent. Okay, now once we've gotten to this place, you feel good about what you've entered, test your prediction pattern. What that will do is that will give us a quick snapshot of the next 12 issues, as we selected 12 in this case, that are coming in. I always suggest doing this because you get a quick look at it. If you're doing, let's say, newspapers and you don't get, let's say, the Sunday newspaper because your library is closed, you can actually select that it's not published. Then Koha knows to skip it. So this is a really good opportunity for you to double check and make sure that everything that you set correctly over here with your numbering pattern and your formula looks good. It's actually just a pat on the back too. Like, hey, look what I did. I've told Koha how to predict this. I'm pretty awesome. Yep. All right, Kelly, let's give this a whirl. We're gonna come down here and we're gonna save our subscription. This takes us to the serial planning page. So now we can see the subscription itself. It will show us the subscription ID, which is unique. That number will keep building as we create new subscriptions. It shows the librarian who's created it, the vendor it's connected to, the bibliographic that it lives under, and then of course a quick link to the OPAC view. We can also see the location and then each of the fields that we filled out when we were creating the subscription. Kelly, talk to us about the planning tab. 
this is a, a, another kind of sum up of what you just filled out in that serial planning page. It's giving you all the information we just entered. When did we start the subscription? How often does it come? This is where that manual history will come into play. So on, on the third line, we have manual history, edit history. So we can actually come in here and make any edits that we need to um, in the past of our subscription itself. Okay, within issues, we will see the next expected issue and anything that has been received in the past. Summary, just really another, it, it's what we filled out in those two pages that's really letting us give us all this information in just various places. So we can see that was non-public notes, public notes, any information that we filled out. It's a nice little sum up. Now, for those of you that may be in a multi-branch system or you get two, um, two or three copies that may be in different locations, under the edit tab, you have an option to edit as new duplicate. This will copy the fields over so you can use um, the same field information in there and set up a new copy. Maybe you get this at you know, two different branches. You could set it up and then update, of course, the, the other branch in um, the next subscription. Absolutely. You can also, of course, renew. This will give you a modal window um, where you can um, view the information and, and set your subscription uh, renewal. Receive, that's the biggest thing in this, the serials module is we get to actually receive that issue that we started with and then we're ready to rock and roll. Every month we come in here and we receive each issue. All right, let's go through the process. This will bring us up a table where we can see that predicted issue. So we see that number 309, we see the published on date. You do have a published on text. This is a free text form. A few things you want to remember here. If you want this to be visible in the OPAC, if you put it in the notes field, it will be visible on the OPAC. If you put it on the published on text, it will only be visible on the staff side. So just a heads up if you want to put any type of notes in there, published on text is staff view, notes will be OPAC view. When we get to status, we'll have our drop down menu where, of course, in a happy scenario, we'll just hit arrived and it's here. However, you'll notice there are various statuses that you can set dependent on what has happened to that periodical. So we will change that to arrived. And in this case, we did not set it up to add an item record. Um, so this will not populate a new um, item record. And we can now come in and then again save. You'll notice there is a multi-receiving option. So let's say two or three came at once. I can remember sometimes they would just, it would just happen. You'd get like two or three copies at once. Mm -hmm. um, it'll give you a modal window where you can say I'm receiving two or three copies. And it'll even say set the date received to today, yes or no. Very, very helpful for those long holidays that you were closed and you have to receive them all. Can yep. we pause here for a second, Jesse? We have a supplemental issue option. So yep. in any in any time that you are receiving something and you have like a like a separate magazine that came with it and you want to track that, mm -hmm. you can enter that supplemental issue as a free text. So all, anything you want to do, whether this was the Thanksgiving cookbook section of the Martha Stewart or um, summer beverages. Yeah. You can go ahead and do that. Of course. Once we click save, now we will get into the next view where this is our serial collection, we call this page. And this will give you a snapshot where you can see that next expected issue. You can also come in and edit your serials. This is a good one that a lot of people always forget about this. If you check one of these and you hit edit, this will allow you to actually come in and make changes to that serial record um, in here. Maybe you change the publish on date or the number skipped or you know whatever it may be. This is a nice way to get in there. I always forget that exists. So thanks I know. for the reminder. Um, Kelly, what else from here is good? R routing lists, if, if you're interested in, you know, maybe it's the ALA magazine or um, American libraries, you know, whatever it is, you can route that around the library. 
um, that allows you to create a routing list and by adding recipients this will populate your patron record so let's say Kelly and I both wanted to get a copy of um, Martha Stewart living <laughs> we could add our names right in there um, and that would let, let us create a little um, routing list within the system absolutely this is perfect Okay, um, now that we have this created, Kelly, let's talk about, and there's just a quick preview of our, our record. Let's talk about claims. Absolutely. When we're on this kind of the main page of a serial specific um, subscription, on the left-hand side, we have an option for claim. So if we could, if we're on a subscription for a specific magazine, we have some options on the left. One of those being claims. We can see any um, magazines that are claimed by vendor. So you can see our vendor in there. And when we click OK, that will give us a quick view of any title that may be outside or late in the system. So we can see we were supposed to um, receive this one in July and it still has not come. And so this gives us the opportunity to select that and there's two ways to do it. If you prefer going to your vendor's website and emailing them or you have a good relationship with your rep and you want to email them, you can download selected claims that will create a CSV file that you can attach. Your other option is to send a notification and that will email your rep and just let them know that you have not received that serial. Guess where that is customizable in? In notices and slips under the tools module. So I was just going to say that that's your notice serial claim. So it's, it's set up, but you can ask, you can edit that if you need. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to go back to the serials homepage. A couple other things we want to, we want to mention before we wrap up this deep dive. You can manage your frequencies. This is where you can come in and either share a new one or if there's one that you want to make edits to, you can absolutely do that. The same thing goes for your numbering patterns. This list will get long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are so many unique snowflakes in the serials world. Mm -hmm. And um, you, can, you can come in here and customize this. Another thing that people forget about is this. You know, if, if we want to change it rather than saying NO, maybe we just want to say N dot. Um, you know, you can come in here and edit that and make those changes. And then that will be applied to all existing serials in the system. I was just going to say the exact same thing you just said about that. That's hilarious. We're so in line. All right. Perfect. Well, we hope that you're willing to give serials a try if you haven't explored it yet. And if you have questions, please let us know. Uh, check out the blog post. We will link to some other videos that we have. Um, we have a great one on setting up that um, claims notice. And then we have one on using the MANA database if you need to set that up for the first time. And as always, you can always reach out with any questions you may have. Yeah, absolutely. The manual has a few example prediction patterns also for something like Reader's Digest. Don't you remember those? Yeah, um, yeah. But definitely we're, we're here to help and there's lots of resources that will help link you to as well. So thanks so much, Jesse. This was great. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. Thanks everyone for joining us for another session of Deep Dive. Have a and great week. Have a great holiday. We'll be back in December. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.